Okay, let's do this because I lost footage and I got like 11 fucking minutes before work. Oh, what's happening, guys? I'm Abby with More City Nerds. Yada, yada, yada. Here we go. I got to go to work in like 10 seconds. Ah! Django, if you fall, that is hanging on by a fucking thread. Everybody wish me luck. But we got to get into succession and I don't even know where my fucking notes are at because I already did one video and I didn't realize it didn't record. Oh, here we go. Okay. Can we just establish that the Nirvana part was the best part? <laughs> like I said, I literally have like eight minutes to get this done and I'm going to have to edit it on the assembly line. So if this is fucked up, I'm sorry. Kind of. Not really. I am sorry because it is annoying, but I... Uh, just saying. Okay. Oh, we have Ken at the at the lunch or whatever with this woman who's writing this article and we get a real glimpse of, we don't really give a shit what you're saying. We just want to know like certain things like they want to know more about what's going on between you and the siblings they don't really give a shit about what ken is doing and saying and i thought that was really interesting uh i i like that he continues to use terminology where it's like open the kimono is a saying i don't know if you if, if you've never heard that before it's just saying like oh we'll put it all out there um that is a saying i was it's just like ken you keep using these sayings and uh you know you're being your company that you're trying to run is being investigated for assault and shit, so maybe let's not use those sayings. But if you've been watching my videos, like I've been saying, Ken is does not Ken doesn't give a shit. He doesn't give a shit about doing the right thing. He gives a shit about taking over the company from his dad. Also, I have a Kendall video coming for you guys. I, I love Jerry. I feel like they're trying to make us think that she's way out of her depth. And what did we say in the last video, guys? What did we say? Logan is going to protect his family over everything and that's that's a huge theme that's a huge look at how him and ewing were in season one i don't know how that's gonna play in i'm really interested to see how it does but they come from this cloth of no there's there's real loyalty here to your blood and his kids don't give a shit about that but logan that's why he put jerry in charge we find out he says it to shiv later on in the episode but i think they want us to think that jerry is way out of her depth but she really isn't, and I think that some of it is going to... I think that they're... I think they are specifically making it look a certain kind of way with Jerry, and we're all going to be surprised. My camera better not die. I'll be so pissed. Oh, Ken talks about ratting to the government, and I loved him and Tom's back and forth later on in the episode. That was great when he's like, oh, and did you have... And, and do you have immunity? L listen through the episode. Not one time has it been stated that Kendall has immunity. Are they talking about it? Yes. Does he have immunity? No. That is never stated in the episode. He keeps thinking he does, and he thinks, he, once again, the entitlement. I don't want to harp on this, because if you watch the show and you, and you know to look for these things with characters, then you understand what I mean, but it's just like, the entitlement is real with all of these characters, and they think things should just happen because they want them to happen, and that's not how the world works. Okay, let's see how much time we have left. Four minutes. Okay, I love history. I love all that stuff. So the Troy stuff from last episode, and there's been way more. We've talked about this on Twitter, and we've talked about it in the Succession group. And the Succession group, you guys are getting shitty. Like, you guys are getting, like, uh, all angry and shit, and I don't, and, and, and talking shit. Okay, this season, I think the reason people are having issues with this season, it has nothing to do with the writing and stuff. It's a totally different show. If you put this in a different time period, like I've been saying, like with Troy, or made it, if you made it like a Game of Thrones-esque show, this wouldn't be a problem. You know what I mean? Because we went from like, okay, we're kind of being serious stuff, and we're kind of just talking shit, and it's big like companies that don't really affect people, but now it's like serious shit. So this has totally changed the game up. They are at war. This is a different vibe than both the, the the first two seasons like that's just that's just what it is but the siblings are the main focus for news outlets that's what everybody wants to know about is uh, how are how are how is the family holding up because this is the last family that has their company and all this shit and that's a big deal i think my favorite line in the entire thing was roman saying uh oh look you remember this kid or one of my kids names uh i think i have it wrote down where is it Oh, blur face and who cares? Oh my god, I almost fucking died. But that's what I mean. Ken, you are... This, okay, let's just say this again. This show shows us the cycles of abuse. And if you are going to break them, or if you are not going to break them, it is very similar to The Sopranos. It is very similar to Game of Thrones. It's very similar to those things. 
Logan has been through some shit, and that is why I want them to get into his backstory. We know his sister died. We know he went through at least physical abuse with his uncle. We don't know what happened to his dad. We don't know what happened to his mom. We don't know, and I'm not excusing his behavior. I'm just saying I think that's very fascinating. I do. I think that's very interesting to dive into. But, Ken, you are more like your father than you think. You have you are using your kids to lie, using them in your schemes. You don't really give a shit. It's all bullshit. Oh, but the Oedipusy thing. I think that, that really was bothering Ken, and I do think that all this media coverage is bothering him. This, was, this episode was supposed to show how much he gives a shit about how the public looks at him, and I did really like his line when he says, my whole life has been image. What do you, what do you think? And I think he started, well, I don't think he realizes it, but they're showing us, like, most of the world don't give a fuck, Ken. Just you. Just you give a fuck. You know what I mean? So, whatever. Oh, we get Jerry and Carl talking, and she says, look at me. And so Jerry is doing this fighting for power type thing, which, uh, here's one thing that bothers me, and I haven't seen one person say this. What bothers me is I don't think Jerry as a character would be out of the loop, and I don't think she would be surprised by this move by Logan. I don't think that, I, I just don't. So that's why I'm like, I really do think they want us going, look at this conflict that you think is going on, but really over here we're doing something else. Or Jerry's just going to have something up her sleeve, or Logan, I mean Logan already has 18 things up his sleeve. I, I really liked what was going, This I really liked this episode a lot, but Jerry, I just feel like as a character, would already know what's going on, and she would already be like, I already know you're going to listen to him and not me, but that's what's going on when she's saying, look at me, and they're all looking over towards Logan, and then Logan's like, I don't like that deal, cut it off, she's saying she does like a deal do it and now it's like okay and then i did like when logan said are you questioning the chain of fucking command like are you questioning that shit like because we're not questioning shit i'm still fucking here bud and i really liked that i'm not going to lie i also know that people are people online i mean i get it online everybody fights about everything but i don't hate logan like everybody else does i don't understand like i said these characters are not none of them are good or evil none of them not one so it's like I'm going to cheer for the guy who came from nothing and built an empire. Yes, I am. That's who I'm cheering for. I am Team Logan. I am biased. I appreciate Ken. I like Ken. But the fact of the matter is, I'm going to cheer for the guy who built something rather than the bratty kid throwing a fit. That's all I'm saying. I'm not like, it's, it is what it is. If you love Tony Soprano, you're allowed to love Tony Soprano. You're allowed to love, you're allowed to love characters that are... Not the greatest, and it is what it is. Like I said, I just, I do. I love Brian Cox. I love this character. When Logan said, if that rat steps in this building, I'll punch him in the nose, I almost died. That is so funny. I'm pretty sure my Uncle Thomas said that at, at more than one occasion, and I was cracking up. D one thing that I did find super interesting, but like I said, it, it, uh, this is something I liked about... In, little quirks uh, in succession writing that I appreciate is when they have characters that you normally wouldn't hear say things like this. Like, the way that Shiv says rape and things like that so nonchalantly, that's just to show, like, that's a problem. And not only is that gross and a problem that you can have that come out of your mouth so easily, like, covering it up and not having a problem with it, and you're a woman, is fucked up. Like, that's... And they're just talking about, like, oh, let's do this, let's do that. But it's, like... At least other people were going, oh, let's cover up, like, the situation. You know what I mean? But to just totally drop that word. I was just talking about this with the crow. I was like... They didn't shy away from shit. They actually said it. It was like, no, we're covering up rape and murder and stuff like that. And it's like, a lot of times they don't say that. They'll just be like, oh, the issue, oh, the, whatever happened. But Shiv outright says the word. And it's like, that's very powerful to show the audience. Oh my God, we better make it, guys. Oh, I did like when Jerry said, no, the feds are fucking coming. They're coming. And he says, tell them to fuck off. Later on, I, it, was it this episode where he talks to the person from the government? I'm sorry, I've had the craziest week. My mom was in the hospital, she just got home, I'm trying to do this, it's all nuts. But he talks to somebody from the White House, and they claim that's what spooked them. I think Jerry might be in on that shit. I think Jerry might be in on that shit, just to help establish more power for herself. But Logan even says, Shiv, I needed to put somebody else in charge because they need to fucking take this hit, not me. And the truth is, remember back to season one? Tom tried to tell Kendall... Tom tried to have a press conference. Tom tried to do the right thing and they wouldn't let him. They told him that was a bad idea. And Ken specifically says, eat the shit for me and shut the fuck up. He don't want to know. He, he knew some shit was up. Tom tried to tell him. So Ken is not in the right. So all these people that are fighting for Kendall, I'm like, I do like him. I just don't, how can you, so I don't, I don't get it. Like, I'm just like, neither one of these guys are good. It's just preference, I guess. But 
Oh, when he says, I don't do that dance with the government. I did. I loved all that stuff about fuck the government. They can fuck off. And then them showing up at the end. And it was like, here we go. Now, I did say this in one of my videos because I'm not going to get into it. But when the feds normally investigate someone or some place of work, you will never know until the hammer comes down. So that means they have shit ready to go. And But then I realized with a place like this, you would want to show your strength it, and have it on it cameras and everybody watching so you would want to show your power like that but I did I think that I thought that was very interesting because at first I kind of said I was like no you wouldn't that wouldn't really happen like that but then I was like oh no it might because they knew cameras they know this is a big thing that people are watching so I get that and you would want to show like no you, you are not untouchable we can we can still get you Oh my god, we get Tom and Greg back together. That was great. I still love the cyanide joke. That was funny. I liked him moving him moving the office. I thought that that might be Tom. Not only is that a way of like putting Tom down, but I thought that was a way of Tom going like, no, we can't be looking like besties and having and everybody in the family having great offices and all this shit. Like it was all it, it was it was to bully him and put him down, but it was also a move, I think. Let's get to the watch. Some people are going, what's up with the watch? What's up with the watch? What's up with the watch? It's just supposed to show that Kendall don't really give a fuck about Greg. He's just trying to keep an eye on him and see what he does. And I think Greg fucked up by that, by running around with him because you have to, every time there's cameras in the background or paparazzi or some shit like that, you have to remember, like, that's probably going to get out. Like, that's a big part of the show. So anytime there's paparazzi, cameras, social media, people running around with their cameras out, Normally, that means it's going to come back. Notice how Naomi is sneaky rat sneaking, listening to everything he says, and, and before she ever responds to anything Kendall says, she sees how he takes it. And then she, I think, manipulates the situation to her, or what will be what she thinks is her benefit in the end. But notice that. Every time he says something, every time he reacts to something, she's like, okay, do I laugh? Okay, he laughed, I can laugh. Okay, did he do this? Okay, then I can say it like this. And then she's the one telling him things to do. I'm like, yeah, manipulation. There we go. There it is. Like I said, I only have like 30 seconds. Oh, shit. I have less than that. I should be gone. Um, Tom and Greg talk about essentially how they covered it up and how they want an outside lawyer. I did like when Tom essentially tells Logan, I will go on the chopping block for you. But then it calls a different lawyer and tries to hook something up. But Greg calls him after Kendall shuns him. That's what I mean. Don't underestimate Greg. He's the one seeing things. He's the one he telling people stuff because everybody underestimates him. Okay. So obviously I didn't finish when I was supposed to. I'm really sorry guys. The next episode's coming on in like four minutes. So once again, I'm on a time constraint. I look like shit and let's, I don't even care. Let's just, I want to get something recorded and probably at least edited together before the next episode is put out, but yeah, I have like four minutes. Uh, where do we leave off? Greg being underestimated. Okay, yeah, we get a phone call between Tom and Greg, and Greg's ratting Kendall out because Ken's being an asshole now with the watch, with, with everything. And I love when Greg was telling that, that woman he was, um, what is it? He was self-conscious about his wrists. I thought that was super funny. But once again, we're just showing Kendall being a total fucking asshole and being like, okay, I don't give a shit about you. I'm really just trying to keep an eye on you. That is exactly why Greg rats Kendall out, or yeah, rats Kendall out to Tom and calls and we, we don't hear the full conversation, so I would like to hear what else Tom and Greg have talked about on the phone, but that's why Greg rats Kendall out and tells Tom that he's coming to Waystar. Back and forth between Tom and Kendall was great. I loved that. And I just felt like those two actors could really work off of each other very well. I mean, everybody's great in this, but I really liked that. That is where we find out. Kendall doesn't even have immunity yet. He does not have official go-ahead to say that he has immunity. His lawyer is like, what the fuck are you doing? I haven't secured this yet. And once again, Kendall is not listening to anybody, especially the women in this show. And they're doing that on purpose, if you can't tell. Logan tells Shiv to go and neutralize Ken at this um, press thing and... Roman is told to go on this interview and be asked these questions. I thought that him and Shiv going or him going over the questions and then him and Shiv going over the questions that she they would both be asked at both of their events was pretty funny. Once again, I do think Roman loves his dad the most and this is shown in the first season with the find me a sweater that smells like him and this is shown over and over again. And here's my opinion on him dropping that gay slur, Logan, at the end to, to Roman. One, Roman was super hurt by Logan not remembering that, and I think he's lying when he says me and Connor went. I think that really bothered him that his dad didn't remember this trip that he remembered. Also, I think he dropped that bomb because they want to remind... If you have noticed, like I, like I keep saying, if you change the time period up or change the context of this up, 
it would come off differently. But because of the 1% aspect and because of the business aspect, we are automatically like, oh, I hate Logan. You guys all know that I'm biased towards Logan and I love Logan. It is what it is. I love Brian Cox. I don't care. I'm not going to apologize. But it's a character. You're allowed to like characters no matter who they are, if you, whatever. But, um, I think that's just a remind. If you notice that Kendall is just fully on the attack this season, he's been on the attack for the last three seasons. It's attack, 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 attack. So if they don't remind the audience, like you're not supposed to like Logan, then you you kind of mix it up a bit. So you have to remind the audience, like, oh no, he's big and he's bad and he says terrible things. And not only is he ignorant and he's saying shit that you shouldn't say. I don't even think that's what bothered Roman though. I think that it was the fishing trip that really truly bothered him. Also, people keep saying like, why isn't there more Jerry and Roman? Why isn't there more Jerry and Roman? This tone has totally changed. And I think that's exactly why Roman was on his way to Jerry's office was to do some weird shit. And there you go. I, I, I think that's what was going on. I don't think he was really working. And then his dad caught him. Let's skip to good tweet, bad tweet. That was actually accurate and actually really bothered Kendall. And back to the Naomi thing, it really, that you can, every time they read one, she is looking over and seeing how he reacts. And then she's covering for him because she's manipulating the situation. Then we get to Kendall and Shiv running into each other at the uh, press thing. And I really loved Shiv and Nate's back and forth. And when she was like, we got the Stalin so fast, I thought that was pretty funny. I laughed really hard at that. Um, and this is what I mean. Kendall is, I'm better than everybody bullshit. And really, it's like, no, you're not. And then he even apologizes. Like I said, he meant that shit. He said to Shiv last episode, he meant that shit. It wasn't supposed to be funny it, with him and his siblings that, towards the end. It was supposed to be uncomfortable and uh, and it bothered them. And that's why Kendall feels bad about it. And that's why he's apologizing to his sister because he knows he said some fuck shit, but he really believes that shit. Sweet thing was really sad, though, seeing Kendall starting to break. That 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 was sad. I know that we already talked about Kendall coming in, but like I said, we're kind of all over the place right now, and I i don't even care. I, I hope you guys don't either, but I'm sorry that we are. But I, the, him and Shiv talk about Kendall coming in. He doesn't, Shiv doesn't think he will. Oh, also, I called it. I called it back in my original video about Succession, that about the trailer of season three. I was like, I think they want, and I want to look and see if they edited it, because I don't think the book looks the same. And you know how they'll change up like Avengers trailer so that we don't know who's there and shit? I kind of think that's what they did, because I think they wanted us to believe it was, I'll put, do you want to know what? I'll insert it right here if I have the time. Candle. So Shiv um, spitting in a ledger in the office of the Roy Star company, offices so obviously she's mad at somebody i think they want us to think that she's mad at her dad logan but i don't think it's logan i think it's going to end up being kendall i think that the reason shiv coming for kendall was such a blow to kendall at the end though was because in the past seasons shiv has always been the one to step up and be like are you really okay like i really do want to help you and she's the one who gives him a hug after he kills that kid like and she doesn't even know what's going on but she knows something's wrong with her brother so i think for her to put that out really hurt him and I think that's why it bothered him so much. Like, I, I think that was probably the last sibling. I think he knows what she's capable of for sure. I just don't think he thought like, wow, Shiv, you did this to me without them even. Like, wow. I loved Shiv and Logan together. That was great. And I did like how he was, I think, I believe Logan when he says, there isn't a piece of paper you'll find that will make you ashamed of me. And I fought for you and your brothers. I did that. Like, I believe him when he says that stuff. Now, is he a super manipulator? Yes. Also, we'll get into Marsha more. We'll talk after this next episode. We'll talk about Marsha more because I want to see where that's going. But Marsha's essentially saying like, "No, I'll back you, and I'll be around you, and I'll do all the press, and I'll lie, and I'll cover things up, and I'll be with you, Logan." But the truth is, I want this, 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 and this, so I don't cause a scene. Also, remember, Marsha knows about Kendall and his shit, and so does her son. So you don't think Logan's kind of looking out there too? He tells, once again, he tells Shiv, just like Kendall kind of did, but not as bad because Logan does not underestimate women. He doesn't. He knows that they can just be, be as just as formidable as men. That's Kendall's mis, that's his misstep. He doesn't realize it. And that's why he doesn't realize it with Naomi and that he's being played. But when he tells her, you're my only daughter, it does matter. And for the optics, it probably, it, that probably would matter to people because look at what that, because there's a reason why characters say things. Just like that disruption host when she said, and she's the fucking nice one. She already has this out, this look of I'm the nice one and I'm the girl and all this shit. So Logan's not wrong, but it's like, it's still wrong to be like, yeah, it matters more because it's coming from a girl. It shouldn't matter more. He asks her, do you trust me? And she is like, yeah, he is willing to get rid of anybody, like I've been saying, to protect his family at the end, even if he's pissed at them. The law is people. I can handle people. That was a great line. Back to the skit show, I do think that this is genuinely... Kendall is an attention whore. Roman was right. He is an attention whore. He wants all this attention. He likes it. This is being in the conversation. No, you are out here looking fucking stupid. You're rewatching it 16 times on your phone. You're a goddamn loser. Like, if that makes sense to you guys. Like I said, I want to go watch the new episode, and I want to record this before I know... 
anything that happens, but God, it's been so bad the last week. I do think the skits secretly bother Kendall, though. I really do. I think they secretly irk him, but he just likes the attention. It's not really what they're saying. Also, I went down a Greek mythology rabbit hole the other day. Shit is fucking crazy. I understand that it's psychological and all this stuff, and I, and I love mythology. I just forgot how crazy it was. Like, I knew the story of Oedipus, but, like, rereading it and, like, re-listening to it at work, I'm like, Jesus Christ, what is happening here? About the Trojan War, and, the, oh, I'm rereading the Iliad, and I'm like, Jesus, what is going on? And it's wild, and I love it. Did you know that they still make them study the Iliad at West Point and still use it today to come up with strategies for war? Yeah, that's how impactful the Iliad is. But let's get back to this, because um, we gotta get we got to get to the next one in a little bit. Um... I did like Tom saying the dog didn't feel good and all this stuff, but I think that he really was talking. I think he was really meaning himself, like he's uneasy and he's upset and all that shit. I, I think he was more talking about himself than the dog. I'm not saying that the dog wasn't sick. I'm just saying he's more talking about himself. And then he offers himself up and he tells Logan that. And I, I laughed. I, that's another time I laughed too hard. I feel like Tom has been the funniest one so far is um, just... Smack the trout on the head and stick it in your pouch. I was laughing so hard, but he offer, offers himself up, and then he calls that other lawyer, so we still don't know what's going on there. Now that Kendall pissed Greg off, maybe Tom will hitch his wagon to him. When Logan talks to the woman from the White House, I really liked that, and when he, th but this is what I mean. Like I said, if you watch Kendall's interaction, not just with women, with men and women, but all of the women this season, he has cut them off, he has demeaned them, he belittles them, he acts like he can do all of their jobs better than them, and he knows more than them. Logan does not do that. He knows that women are not stupid and that he needs to be worried about, uh, that everybody can be just as formidable, and I respect that about Logan, and that's probably why I like him as a character. Same reason I like Tywin Lannister. I don't underestimate you because you're a woman. I underestimate you because you're not as smart as you think you are. Logan is talking about the president and helping, though. I love that, and he said it could get a lot fucking worse. I'm real excited to see where that goes. And trying to get into Waystar was great. That was, that was pretty epic. I really liked that a lot. I thought that was really tense and really well done. I don't know why people are starting to think that other people set the speakers up. It's like, no, that was blatantly Kendall, I feel like. And if it wasn't, then whatever. And I thought that was so well done. When Shiv, it's like, wow, you're doing great. Like, you're doing awesome. And like I said, I'm not condoning the shit that goes on. Like, I don't think people understand that. And it's starting to be like, like I'm getting DMs. I'm getting tweets. I'm getting Facebook messages. Like, how I'm like a piece of shit for liking Logan. And it's like, first and foremost, um, mm, mm, fuck off. I don't know you. I don't, Outside of the content, the context of what is going on Shiv is doing great it's like yeah go get him like you're you're doing great and then when Nirvana cut in it was like I literally did that I was like no fucking way I was like oh my god and that was so and it's not supposed to be yeah you can laugh at it or like nervous laugh or whatever it is it's like no that was supposed to be uncomfortable and they made it super uncomfortable and it was it was like oh shit but I know a lot of people are saying that it wasn't Kendall who did that and I'm like no it was totally Kendall why would no, it was told, but it's like Logan does say, see, I told you. And it's like, no, he, he didn't do that. He's not that fucking stupid. People said it was Roman. I was like, why would Roman do, why would anybody set up this company to fail besides Kendall? It's in the family. I really loved and what was really uncomfortable and like, oh shit, was when that guy who covered up Kendall's murder or manslaughter, whatever the fuck you want to call it, he showed up. That was like, oh fuck. But I really liked that a lot. But that whole thing. Shiv spitting in the ledger. I called this out before. I was like, that's Kendall's, not Logan's. Like I said, I probably already inserted it into this video as of now. And that Hugo, that Hugo is a kiss ass to all of the, everybody, but like, especially to the women like Marsha and Shiv, like he's always just trying to manipulate them and tell them how, like, I don't know. It's very weird that, that Hugo is a total kiss ass though. And he's, I think he's somebody to look out for. Definitely, for sure. And we get to the end of the episode and Kendall's like broken at that show because Shiv put out that letter about him. Um, I liked when the, I liked when Roman, K Connor, and Shiv all had their back and forth, and they were like, "No, I'm not doing this." I think Connor's kind of doing it out of spite because he's mad at everybody, and I think that Roman genuinely is like, "I'm not going to do this to my brother," and that's what I mean about Ro Roman's feelings and stuff are most like Logan's. Ken is the one acting most like Logan. You ignore your kids, you put work above them, you uh, lie, you use them to lie. Like, come on now, like come, what? What? But Roman is the one who. He's the one who says it last season. Fuck Congress. Oh, have I shocked you? And Shiv's like, you can't just say fuck Congress. And now Logan's saying fuck the FBI. But yeah, we get to the end of the episode and Kendall's once again telling these women what to do, cutting them off at the show, trying to do whatever he wants, does it to the men too, trying to tell the writers what to do, and then he finds out about the letter. 
Then the FBI come, and that was a great scene when Jerry is like, shut the fuck up, Logan, and fucking listen to me. And Logan is trying to rebuttal, but he's like, when he said, can, tell them, ask them if they can come back tomorrow, I almost died. I was laughing so hard, but it was, that was a great back and forth between them. And Jerry's right, and Logan knows Jerry's right. That's the whole thing. Logan knows Jerry's right, and that's why he's like, man, fuck. Like, you know what I mean? And so I, I, I really did, but I loved that. And then the feds show up. And I thought that was really well done. And Kendall sees it on his phone and he's grinning like, he starts to smile, like, got him. While the feds are coming in though, Tom is whining and dining the advertisers. So that's really bad. Like, oh shit, everybody who sponsors us is here right now and they see the feds coming in. I'm going to say, and then I'm going to go watch the fourth episode, guys. So I'm super excited. Um, and I hope you guys had a better week than I did. I, 2021's been bad for all of us, but let's talk about Ken. This, epi this last episode, episode three, was super reminiscent of when he loses the boardroom. He's just done. He's just done. He's like, I'm over it. I'm done. I'm broken and I'm done. And then it's like, okay, you coward. You couldn't even fucking step up to the plate and fucking back yourself on this show. That's how I, that's how I take it. I'm sorry, but that's how I take it. You're a goddamn coward. You're a coward. You want to be your dad, but you don't have the balls to be your dad. Ken being lost that episode was very similar to Logan being lost in the episode at the ending of this season's first episode. You're a lot more like your dad than you think, buddy. But yeah, I'm pretty sure Kendall just gave up until... He saw that FBI raid, and I do think that somebody was involved with that. Whether it's Jerry, Hugo, somebody, Marsha, I don't know. Somebody was involved with that FBI raid, I think, though, for sure. Yeah, I gotta go watch the episode. I'm real excited. I hope you guys are excited. Um, we did have a winner for the giveaway. My buddy Kyle. Kyle. Kyle F. I don't, wanna, I don't know what. If you're not, if you want to go listen to my buddy's music, um, he is on YouTube. He's on Spotify. He's on everything as Kyle Space capital Y, capital D, capital G, so Kyle YDG, and he's great, he's amazing, and he was the one who won the Loki horns, so congratulations, Kyle, um, I'll hit you up about it later, I'm super happy for you, it's super cool, I'm Abby with Motor City Nerds, and I can't believe we're at 300, thank you guys, I think we're at 302, and I'm so, thank you to my 302, we're small, but we're awesome, and we have a good time over here, sometimes I look like a bum, sometimes mom is here, oh, and mom's out of the hospital, she is home, she's downstairs waiting for me, so I gotta go, and I'm gonna try and get this up before this episode, I, I know it's, what time is it? Shit, it's 9.15. I gotta go, I gotta go, I gotta go. I'm gonna try and get this out before 10 so that people believe that I fucking didn't record this at a different time. But yeah, subscribe, like, comment, share, everything. Oh, Succession fans, be nicer. You guys are getting mean and I liked you guys way more before. I don't understand why everybody's getting so negative lately or if just more negative people have been hopping on my shit. Be nice in general. Just be, just be a decent person.